As we were walking back to take a break, I came across this young man with this beautiful parrot. Uh, yeah, parrot. And he's going to speak a little bit about what he does and why it's important. The, the biggest misconception that we really get with uh, animal intelligence is uh, really that there are smarter animals and that there are dumber animals. That is not the case in nature. In that case, you would have to assume, if by ranking animal intelligence on a hierarchy, you would have to assume that all animals, including humans, because humans are animals, that they all brought up, were brought up, sprung up from the same environment for the same reasons and purposes. And that is just, that's just not the case. So when we're out here, because we do get a lot of attention, as you probably see, uh, a lot of people come up to us and ask us, uh, how smart are they? Uh, smarter than a dog or as smarter as a, a pig? It's like, they're just as smart as they need to be. Exactly. Every single animal, every single being on this planet evolved and developed in their environment. Yeah. So when this parrot is in on that island, what, what, what's the breed of parrot? Uh, well, he's an eclectus parrot, but um, the thing about these parrots is they live on islands off the coast of Australia, islands. So every island has their own subspecies of that parrot. And some are bigger than others, um, and they've developed different uh, diets. He is the Solomon Island eclectus. There's four that are bred in the U.S. specifically. He's the smallest of all the subspecies. But um, the diet I can't tell you off the top of my head because it's very unique to that island. But the closest that we can get to is well, another thing with this type of bird. They require more fruits and vegetables for their diet because uh, their digestive tract is a lot longer than other birds. So giving them seeds actually shortens the lifespan. When they first brought the birds here, the, another thing about these birds is the males look like this. The girls are actually red and purple. Beautiful animal. Yeah. It really is. And the they colors look, are ugly. Yeah. But they look so different that people for so long thought that they were different species. So they tried mating the males with the males and the girls with the girls. <laughs> and of course, nothing happened. At least, not that I know of. But because of that, um, so so when an animal has a short digestive system, it's better for digesting highly available nutrients like like fruit and meat. But when an animal has a long digestive system, that's where it would be more akin to like plant foods. And certain birds have specific adaptations and enzymes in their bodies to digest seeds. Yeah. So this is a bird that eats fruit. Yeah, mostly fruits and vegetables. Giving them seeds, well, because these birds, most parrots of this size can live to be 70 years. 70 or 80. 70. That's 70 years. Yeah. Uh, the African gray, I don't know if you've heard about African grays. Um, the gray parrots, that, they're really popular because they talk a lot, they're smart. Scientists have actually taught them how to read, uh, count, um, they, they, they can tell jokes and stuff. I've uh, seen this firsthand, and um, I'm sure all parrots can do it, but they can live to be 70. If you give them just seeds, or mostly seeds, they will only live to be 30. You're like poisoning the animal. Yeah. Just seeds will actually shorten their lifespan by that much. And um, so that's why most birds that live here that are bred, oh, careful. <laughs> Likes just going out into the street. Can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, so like, yeah, giving them just seeds will actually shorten their lifespan by that much. But yeah, just like I said, he's a baby, so he still has a lot to learn. He, uh, he does this thing called free flight where he flies outside. He doesn't need this harness. He can fly outside, as you can tell. He really wants to go, but this is our first time, one of the first few times being in the city. And I won't let him out because mostly... Um, there are hawks too, right? Yeah, there are falcons. Falcons, hawks. Uh, the, and one of them happens to be the fastest animal on the planet, the peregrine falcon. They can reach speeds, God knows how uh, fast. Probably over 100 miles. Something yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Something crazy. They'll swoop up pigeons just like that. And seagulls. And uh, yeah, I, I won't trust him being out here. So that's why we pick certain spots where he can, he can, he can fly out on the beach. He can fly out in certain spots where it's safe, and especially not where there's cars and a lot of people. I don't know how people will react. But yeah, um, for him to talk, his language is still in its early stages. He still has a lot to learn. I'm teaching him right now how to read. See up? Yep. Recording it. But yeah, he gets really scared sometimes because he is one and a half, and you have to think about him. Guess got to picture him as a one and a half year old. Zooming in. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Oh wait, you want to do it on this side? So how do I? Do I do yeah, 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 yeah. You just uh, yeah, just say uh, hi, nice to meet you. Like, hi, oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Go ahead. Just shake his hand. Like, uh, hi, nice to meet you. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> he he does get nervous when people are like looking at him, staring at him. Oh, yeah. He still is really young, so he, he these birds are very. They can tell when there's like three or four people looking. At him. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Especially because um, well, we have a lot of people walk up to us and they'll get straight in his face just like that, and unrenounced to them that unbeknownst to them that he's really he's a baby, so he's gonna get shot. And the thing about birds is you can't tell their age just by looking at them. He could be 70 years old right now. Yeah. yeah, and they look the same. Okay. Uh, talking to comparative psychologists about saying words like smart and intelligent, they won't tell. They won't say words like smart. But well, what can these apes like communicate with you? Can they tell you like, like they can tell you they're hungry probably. Yeah. yeah. But can they tell you like, can they explain the difference between like meat and fish or something? Uh, That's a little... Yeah, they can categorize food and stuff. Yeah. But uh, you need to teach them, yeah. and you need to expose them to that sort of stuff. It's just, and it also depends on the individual. Some are better at it than others, but um, they've only done it with a few apes. And they try to compare those apes to children. Uh, you probably hear a lot of studies where people will say animals, a bird or a, an ape are as smart as a five year old. Yeah, that's not good. That's that's not good. I don't like those comparisons. Yeah. And a lot of those uh, experiments are flawed because they're really biased because you have the animal behind the bars who doesn't have any family social structure who is put up against a child who obviously grew up Western children who grew up, grown up in um, houses with families and stuff and they're being tested by humans. The apes don't have that so when the apes perform low, uh, worse than the babies they say oh it's because humans have a higher intelligence but then when the roles are switched when the apes do something better than the humans they'll say it's inconclusive. Yeah it's, it, that's how a lot of studies are conducted yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, but uh, thank you so much. Did, I mean, I'm not going to short. Did you want to talk about anything else? No, that was... Uh, that was I didn't want to good. take up too much of your time, yeah. man. Thank you so much. What was your name again? Michael. Do you have any, like, social media or anything you want to shout out? Or... No, I uh, have a, YouTube, a small YouTube channel called Michael Gibbons. Okay, so spell that out for them. Uh, M-I-C-H-A-E-L uh, and Gibbons, G-I-B-B-O-N-S. Okay, sounds good. I'll, I'll put his channel link at the end here, guys. Definitely check it out. People will come to us and say, oh, we want to give animals rights, the same rights as you. No, no, no. I, I'm saying we should give them rights to freedom, you know, to choice, you know, not giving them the right to vote or the right to drive a car. These rights should should depend on the animal's needs. Yeah. Because different animals require different needs. Now, it gets kind of complicated when yeah, you're talking course, about... Everything's very subjective. Yeah. Individual yeah, especially when you're talking about all animals. Like, because, like I said, intelligence can't be ranked higher where one is higher than another. So by that logic... You have to treat all, animals. all animals are equally intelligent. So then you have to treat pigeons equally too. as they're in their environment. Yeah, pigeons, rats. Rats are really intelligent too. They they can even regret their own decisions. No one likes rats though. Yeah, well I I do. Oh, some people. I guess I, I know some people don't. I I know a lot of people don't. Mostly because they've only grown up to see them as vermin. We're talking about vermin. I mean, if, if we're talking from an intelligent standpoint, rats have adapted to such a complex yeah. environment. Yeah, they're really successful. A lot of animals that people don't like are Unfortun successful. Unfortunately successful. Yeah, that's the problem. All right, yeah. Thank you so much, man. Let me, um, I don't want to take up so much of your time. No let's problem. Let's go. Let me get you some water from over here. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. No, I have some cold water from over here. I'm sorry, guys.